Defenders keep asking me how I'd make the game better, as if I don't have an answer. So here's 20 to 40 of the things that I think this game needs. Number one, imagine if Hulk could actually lift a car. Wow, imagine that. But that's not all. Imagine if Hulk could lift a car and another hero could shoot at this vehicle and charge it with whatever status is on their equipped gear and Hulk could throw this car for extra damage also applying his projectile gear status. Number two, imagine if Thor could use the Bifrost ability to transport an ally up and bring them crashing down on enemies for extra damage and grant whoever he took up with a temporary buff, whether that's extra health, extra damage, extra defense, you name it. Number three, imagine if Hulk could just pick up allies and throw them at enemies, or if Miss Marvel could slingshot allies at foes. Number four, Thor needs an alternate precision attack that allows him to shoot his lightning instead of throwing the hammer. He does it when he's flying, but cannot do it while he's stationary. Number five, Imagine if when beams were concentrated on an enemy, they were superheated and could be melted in place so that they were temporarily stuck. Iron Man, War Machine, Vision, Captain Marvel, Thor, if you made the adjustments that I said you should in number four, they could all concentrate their beams to melt enemies in place and just allow for some wailing. Number six. If Doctor Strange makes it into your game, give him the ability to make a portal above enemies and one on the ground so that allies can jump down into the portal and crash down on their enemies. I really don't know why Kate Bishop is teleporting. I really don't know why Kate Bishop is making portals. And I certainly have no idea why she is creating projections of herself. You can't tell me these wouldn't be a better fit for the Sorcerer Supreme. Number seven, what if beam attacks actually reflected off of Captain America's shield? For double damage, maybe? What if also people could fire beams at Black Panther when he's in the game so that he could absorb that energy and then expel it explosively onto enemies around him? <laughs> Number eight. Why are you doing this, oh, you want to make a cinematic Captain America becomes worthy thing? Just allow Thor to throw Captain America his hammer, boy. Let him do some tightly choreographed shit like at the end of Civil War. Make it so that we can do team takedowns like with Cap and Bucky. Number nine, if Spider-Man is coming to your game, you're going to have him webbing people up. So I hope when Doctor Strange comes, you allow him to use the bands of Sidorak to bind enemies for a short time so that enemies can just dispense that damage while they're bound. Number 10, if Stark or Rhodey are in the way of Thor's God Blast, they should simply be overcharged. Act like you've seen a movie. This is only 10 suggestions and any fan would agree. This is how a Marvel game should work. The next 10 I'll refer to as uh, quality of life, but these might as well be double what I'm claiming they're going to be in the way of 10 entries. Number 11, fix your damn loot. Yes, it needs a dramatic overhaul so that there are exotics and major artifacts worth chasing, but why are the blues offering higher stats than the exotics? Jesus Christ, a looter? And you fumbled the loot? Number 12. Number 12 is effectively that the blues are dropping entirely too often for people at the max level. But if we refer back to number 11, the comedy is that the blues are offering better stats sometimes than anything else. Number 13 really brings the joke home because most of the mission rewards appear to be guaranteed blues. But maybe the game's doing us a favor because apparently the blues are the top tier reward in this game. But Doc... I am Pagliacci. Number 14, raising the difficulty should, uh, I don't know, offer an end reward? <laughs> That's a little bit higher? Instead of having absolutely no impact like it currently does. 
it's funny I said Impact. I'm playing Genshin Impact music in the background. Most of you may not have played this game in a considerable amount of time, but guess what I recently found out? Did you know that a recent patch broke it so that there's a bug that makes it so that changing the difficulty doesn't actually scale anybody's level or do anything now? My favorite part is that even mentioning this immediately makes the NPC defenders of this game embarrass themselves on some shill, uh, it's gonna be patched, they said it's gonna be patched, like that changes the current state that it's in. Number 15. Marvel's Avengers microtransaction previews, maybe they should match what people actually receive upon purchase. You know, if you're gonna like sell a person a skin, maybe they should get what is advertised. If you show a skin with glasses on it, maybe they should get that. If you show a skin with short hair, maybe they should get that. The store's already dog shit, already awful, which is like a miracle with a property as sexy as the Marvel Universe. So many models are needlessly bulky and could have tighter waists. I don't know what's going on. I would ask you to let them be sexy, but boy, it's becoming kind of ironic at this point because these generic, off-brand, almost what some people would call the Chinese knockoff looking characters would actually have been done better if they were handled by an Eastern developer like Team Ninja handled Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Mwah. Chef's kiss. I said the real Raven. Perfection. Number 16. Level up rewards past level 50 would be nice. Rewards for hero challenges after you've maxed out your card would be nice. Increasing the faction reputation and giving us literally anything. Resources, patterns, maybe gear. Ugh, it'd be nice. Can you increase the money cap? Can you give us gear locking? The ability to save some loadouts so we can switch them on the fly? Number 17. Patrol or a free roam mode with actual villains periodically respawning and repeatable rewarding mini missions for this mode is almost like a necessity in a live service. What you definitely need is a join in progress feature, a replay last mission and a join matchmaking button straight from the Quinjet on the end mission screen. Number 18. Make the non-flying heroes traversal speed fast enough so they can keep up with the flying heroes. This is literally at the top of Dia's list. Number 19. Guess who knows what skins should look like? Guess who knows what characters will sell? Guess who knows how to make an emote wheel to actually sell the emotes in their shop? Guess who frequently has changing limited time modes that you could easily implement in your harm rooms? Fortnite. Pay attention. Fortnite making money, Marvel's Avengers. You're not. Number 20, I leave to you, listener. Leave a comment in the comment section and let people like what they think should definitely be in this game or just take the opportunity to take shots at the biggest fumble in gaming history. How do you ruin a Marvel Avengers game? They showing us how to do it right now. Well, y'all gonna write more than two villains? You know, more than one enemy type? It'd be nice to not just be fighting robots. How about one Marvel location? It would be cool if we could replay the campaign. Oh my God, son. Y'all make it seem like I'm just the meanest guy in the world, but this game roasts itself. And apparently we're not supposed to talk about it because if we mention these things, then we're being negative. Ooh, you're so negative. It's all you focus on. Here's some positive. The combat. That's it. <sighs> I don't like a Marvel Avengers game where you can only play the campaign once and you're only playing a store for 10 minutes. I think that's whack. But if you stop and think about it, a looter with bad loot, a live service with a non-existent endgame, you think it's whack too. We all enjoy the combat, we all wish it was a better game, but potential does not make the game anything other than what it is. So, 
Do you like that I put all this BS at the end of the video? Every content creator you've ever listened to and watched can do what I'm doing right now, but they choose to disrespect you by front-loading their video with garbage. You see how I effortlessly got right into the damn point without a three-minute long intro shilling my social media, trying to make you click some BS, annoying you with a cold open, and then getting into some stupid annoying musical intro before I then start rambling? and then prefacing everything that I'm saying by, uh, I really like this game and I don't want to seem like I'm bashing it, but... Can you imagine me being so neutered? Do you think that's why these simp defenders act like this and let these brands rest a balls on their chin like that? It's because they don't have any balls of their own? I can voice critique without apologizing. I can like something, but expect more of it, as I understand to iron out kinks and dents, you need pressure to forge steel. You need to heat, hammer, and temper that bitch. I'm sorry you are the way that you are. If you said things like, No Man's Sky made a comeback, or Look at Fallout, it bounced back. I could dismantle this argument in infinite ways, but I'll focus on just these two. Number one, if you think Marvel is going to let its property become indistinguishable from doo-doo after Spider-Man has just been dumped out into this game, then I got some links in the description for you. And number two, in a recent Death of a Game video from YouTuber Nerdslayer on Anthem, he presented this interesting clip from the developers of Final Fantasy when they relaunched their product. First, we have to look at the Western developers versus Eastern developers. Eastern. When Final Fantasy XIV failed, Square Enix had their dev team, without having to force them or threaten the axe or anything, hmm. on their own volition and emotions, crying on stage, vowing that they would make a better game with the reboot. Bruh. Then they opened up dialogue with the forum, dialogue. dev talks, developer letters, <laughs> and much more to increase communication so communication they could feedback and feedback. And Does problem. that sound like what we have with the Marvel Avengers developers right now? Or is this what you get? We're gonna make Thune into a nameplate also, I think. We're gonna make Thune into a nameplate also, Men I think. Men joking about a game so broken, it needs fixes, not content, and hasn't received any big updates in three months. Actually, <laughs> let me reiterate. You know what has been updated? And I'm talking in a heartbeat? Exploits. Were you time traveling to vendors to get gear because the drops were garbage? That's been patched. Were you racking up polychloron by tricking the missions into auto-completing? <laughs> you better believe that's patched. Were you having some actual fun by going away from a high priority target and then returning to him so he'd respawn? Boy, that was dropping a little bit too much loot as far as the devs were concerned, so they mega patched that boy. Were you farming patterns to try to get skins other than just Joe? Piggity patched boy. If it slows you down, it was patched like this because that's what their priority is. They didn't allow you to play the story campaign more than once. Enemies still don't spawn or get caught outside the map. If you care enough to actually go for some exotics, you gonna be playing alone. And here's the real comedy, some blues are still better than the exotics. I don't have to pretend I'm not loving this, but that doesn't mean I didn't want it to succeed. Bring me Doctor Strange, bring me Scarlet Witch, put some villains in this game, stop making my beautiful heroes ugly. Bring some decent modes, throw in another faction. All this game needed to be for me, and I'm speaking from the heart, was something I could get high and mindlessly play. The bar is so low, and you're still under it. Right now, you can literally do anything and be better. <laughs> Viewer, thank you for listening. Join me on December 1st for the Galactus event. I'm sure it'll deliver the kind of shared worldwide Marvel experience we were looking for if it's only a one-time deal. Remember what I said about these apologizing chills whenever people pretend everybody hates the game because, you know, they're, they're simply criticizing it. Boy, like this ain't a beta. You know, like we didn't pay to be testers. Hilarious. The problem is becoming how thoroughly entertaining some of these defenders are, like, like too entertaining. 
You know someone's dumb when they refuse to engage in discussion with anybody harboring a contrasting ideology like dialogue and debate is healthy and necessary in versing yourself in multiple perspectives, but when you resist any other perspective but your own because your rigid narrative is so paper thin, like if you're fully aware that it can't withstand scrutiny, that, you know, a slight breeze would knock the house of cards that is your dumb line of thought the fuck over. You're an occult. That's what it is. If you want to laugh, go listen to this podcast. These people are sipping that Defender Kool-Aid so hard you'd swear they were in a cult. It's an echo chamber. Listen to this. Uh, the popular thing to do is to like just badmouth the game. You know, especially if you even haven't bothered picking it up, which most content creators that have shadowed the game haven't done, they haven't really bothered playing the game. Bashing it because it's popular, haven't bothered playing it? You do know that most of the content creators that covered this game streamed it, right? Providing clips through their lengthy experience and saw this game for what it was, a mediocre-ass Kamala Khan game, not an Avengers game. And any momentum the single player could develop was constantly compromised by the forced inclusion of defend this area style missions that were clearly meant to prepare people for a non-existent endgame. You like that room full of dudes you just fought? Would you like to do that for 12 more floors, homie? That's what this game was when it actually worked. When it launched, it didn't work. So the opinions that people have, they are woefully entitled to. Even if you wanted to play the campaign the one time, you could be infinitely trapped on loading screens, slingshot violently out of the damn map, glitches that defy explanation, Michael Bay shaky cam face off glitches, all this and more brought to you in glorious 20 frames per second. A looter with loot so bad that the blues were often better than the epics, the legendaries and the exotics. A looter with bad loot, you're defending this. Some Widow players wouldn't even receive gear drops. A whole ass Marvel game, two villains on repeat, a campaign that clearly had most of the effort go into it that you can only play once. The dailies and the weeklies were broken. The skins were relocking. The performance was so unstable and unplayable that the developers themselves admitted the game fell below their standard. That they're sorry, we're sorry. Here's a compensation package, you want some polychloron? That ought to shut you up. Non-existent communication from the developers. Direction so stupid, Kate Bishop is your first DLC hero. Oh, you wanted somebody different? How about another archer? Wait, you announced him first, why are you doing the girl? What, what the fuck is this? The content creators streamed their playthroughs, fool and documented the hard crashes, the bugs where enemies would be outside of the map or if they spawned at all. A bug that's still plaguing this game right now, by the way. Save wipes, data corruption, and in your tiny brain, you defender, you immediately gotta move the goalpost. Well, you should have backed up your save. They're gonna patch it. Just don't pl to pl play something else for right now. <laughs> all games launch with problems and stay that way for three months? God bless the gamers smart enough to have educated themselves and avoided this. This pain will benefit everybody associated with this property as we move forward as an industry, you know, as we mature. You know what I'm talking about? I don't think you do. Look at my sale, I have a sale. Buy now, content later, fuck you. It's popular to bash the game. Bro, you're an NPC. I hope that the shekels that you're being paid is worth your integrity. The comedy of you saying, well, I've never had issues, as if it invalidates everybody else that's going through this. It's the height of comedy. Y'all are free to love this game and gobble it to your eyes water, but act and oblivious to its obvious and blatant flaws, bro. That's what, that's what's more entertaining than this game could ever be. I consider you guys clown ASMR. So listener, comment below which roller coaster you think is more crazy at this point. The, the community around the Avengers or the game itself, man. Oh my God. Which train wreck do you prefer in the comment section below? If this game is allowed the time that it needs to eventually limp on and become something different from what it is now, a game worthy of everybody's attention, 
then hopefully then we'll all be able to come back together and finally acknowledge that this was dog shit the way that you should be acknowledging now but I guess you have interests where you have to pretend otherwise. You know, I've been going out of my way to make sure people know not to resuscitate uh, the body that is this game. The dead body, you know. But um, let's see if they can drop a real hero by Christmas. I love you. Links in the description. Get me a PlayStation 5. I believe in you. Flex on these, you know, flex on these.